Hello everyone and welcome today to our webinar. You're in the right place to learn all about the exciting new tactic of SMS campaigning. My name is Lawrence Gradeska. I am the Director of Nonprofit Community at Change.org and I'm really excited to be here with you today for our webinar, I'll text you SMS for your nonprofit campaign. Uh, I have some uh, really wonderful representatives from Mobile Commons and Greenpeace on the call with us today. They're going to share a lot of great knowledge. Also on the call are over 400 folks from all over the United States and the world uh, joining in to, to learn about how SMS is being used by nonprofits to engage supporters. Uh, groups like Democracy for America, American Cancer Society, the DCCC, the One Campaign, uh, Union of Concerned Scientists. So really honored that you could all take the time to join us today and uh, listen in. We do have some great content that we've put together for you today. Quick rundown of our agenda is uh, introductions, which uh, are underway right now. We're going to give some context about the move to mobile that's been happening online over the last year or two. And then Greenpeace USA is going to talk to us about how they use SMS. Um, we'll go through some best practices for integrating mobile with your campaigns, and finally wrap up with some campaign examples from Mobile Commons and, and Greenpeace about how they've been effectively connecting with supporters for the work they're doing. Uh, finally, plenty of time for questions and answers at the end of the webinar. Um, we will be recording this webinar and sharing the video with you when we're all done. And we are also on Twitter at the hashtag, NP, hashtag NPOSMS. We'll be tweeting some high-level uh, stats and takeaways from today's presentation. Uh, if you want to be sharing anything you've learned at that hashtag, we'd be happy to interact with you there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to tweet them. You can also answer question, uh, ask questions in the chat window on the left-hand side of your screen, and we'll be answering those questions in the last 15 minutes or so. Um, so that's the, the outline for the webinar today. And like I said, I'm really honored to be joined by two amazing folks. I'm really grateful they could spend some time with us today. The first is Dawn Bickett. She's the online campaigner, one of the online campaigners at Greenpeace USA. And Dawn is really responsible for uh, digital campaign engagement with a few different channels, but uh, really leading up how Greenpeace is using SMS in the United States. Dawn, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, it's great to be here. Excellent. I can't wait to, to, for you to be able to share what you've put together. Um, really great stuff. Um, and also with us is Michael Sabat from Mobile Commons. He's the VP of Business Development. And Michael is talking all the time about this exciting new channel of, of SMS and how nonprofits are using it to drive action and engage their supporters. Hey, Michael. Hey, Lawrence. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, really great to have you here. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Lawrence Gradeska. I'm the Director of Nonprofit Community at Change.org, and it's my job to help all of you understand how to use uh, online campaigning and petitions and new channels like SMS to help with your advocacy, find the right supporters you need for your work, and to uh, be effective and have the most impact possible. And of course, you probably know a little bit about Change.org since you're on our webinar today. Uh, change.org is the world's platform for change. It's really our mission to empower people everywhere to create the change they want to see. And this happens when people and organizations create petitions on our site about the issues they care about. And we see these individuals and organizations using petitions to tell their stories and gather support for their causes. Um, we like to think that we're providing a megaphone to hundreds of thousands of petition creators to find the support they need, to find the people power to really move the needle on their issue. And as of uh, 2013, we had about 6, 000, over 6,000 victories around the world, and we're at about 50 million users in every country on the planet. And that makes us the world's largest petition platform, but most of all, it just makes us incredibly honored and excited to see all the activity and all the impact that's happening through Change.org, through individuals engaging with issues they care about, and through all the organizations that are coming to our platform, creating free petitions, using our paid services to connect to the supporters they need to build their movements that make a difference. Um, and altogether, organizations on Change.org have collected over 85 million signatures, and that's just really a, an incredible impact that we're terribly excited about. All this happens on Change.org through incredible storytelling. Uh, with over 25 petitions started, uh, 25,000 petitions started every month, we see a lot of powerful stories 
like that of Zach Walls pictured here. He uh, is a, a former Eagle Scout that was very involved with the, the dozens of petitions on our site last year asking the Boy Scouts of America to change their century-old policy of discrimination against gay scouts and leaders. This is a picture of Zach delivering hundreds of thousands of signatures to the headquarters of Boy Scouts of America. Uh, that was an incredibly successful set of, of petitions and campaigns on our site and really uh, indicative of what's possible when people engage with causes that they're passionate about. Um, and as far as storytelling, online petitions is one way to do it, email, websites, and today we're going to be talking about SMS is another channel for you to tell your stories um, and engage the supporters to be involved with your work and, and to have the impact that you're looking to, to make. And uh, Dawn actually is going to, to get us started here and um, uh, talking about engagement and interacting. She's going to ask you all to, to text us. Hi again. Um, this is Dawn. I, so what better way to start off a presentation on SMS than a little bit of texting? Uh, you should have your phones out. Um, go ahead and text SMS to 877-877. That's the Greenpeace short code. Um, so when you text that number, you'll get a poll question asking you uh, whether or not your organization has already tried or is currently trying um, SMS campaigning. Go ahead and reply to that text message, and later on in the presentation, I will have the results for you. Super exciting. Um, thank you so much, Don. Really uh, love to be able to demonstrate for all of you while we're talking um, actually what happens when, when a, a supporter interacts with your, your texting campaigns. So uh, the first section of the webinar today is to give you some context about what's happened online in the last couple of years as far as uh, the move to mobile. If any of you ever watch, are watching your Google Analytics um, or even just observing the changing ways that, that we all are interacting with web content, it's probably clear that the web's going mobile and, and very, very quickly. Uh, Internet trend guru Mary Meeker says that if the current trends continue, by the end of this year over 30% of all global Internet traffic will come through mobile devices. So this is a real um, wake-up call for anyone that's trying to get their messages out to, to people online. Um, people are, are consuming those messages more and more through their mobile devices. And we see that on change.org uh, dramatically. This is a, a quick snapshot of mobile traffic to change.org in the U.S for the month of January 2013 and the month of January 2014. And so that, that green section of the pie there is mobile traffic compared to non-mobile traffic. And you know, we've, we've easily doubled mobile traffic. We're approaching that 30% um, uh, marker that, that Mary Meeker talks about, and we're tracking against that, if not going to exceed that by the end of the year. So, um, this is a, a real, this is happening, and we need to be prepared for it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what Change.org has been doing over the last year or so, um, but all of you out there need to be aware of the impact of this mobile traffic on your existing content assets and your online programs, uh, but also to take advantage of this new way to engage supporters where they're at in the moment on their mobile devices. And so I'd like to turn it over to, to Michael from Mobile Commons to give us some more context and background on, on what Mobile Commons has seen in this move to mobile. Hey, thanks Lawrence. So just wanted to kind of give a quick overview of a small selection of organizations that are using mobile. Um, and so these are, are not Mobile Commons clients, but they're uh, nonprofits. Some of them are, but they're nonprofits that are, you know, doing mobile campaigns. And uh, so there's a lot of them. It's very well established in this vertical. And Mobile Commons focuses on nonprofits, but we also work with some government, healthcare, and education clients. And I can pretty uh, strongly say that nonprofits are really leading the charge here um, and more involved than a lot of the other you know, government healthcare out there in terms of how they're using mobile. So that's very interesting. Um, and, and again, we kind of have some best practices really established in this space uh, that may not be, that's not the same case in other areas. So part of the reason we're here is, um, you know, SMS, right? And so that's kind of the focus. And the reason it's important is because we've reached a place both in the world and in the U.S. where mobile phones and SMS is absolutely ubiquitous. So these are stats mostly from the U.S. Uh, there's more cell phones than people. 
there's over 6 billion text messages sent every day in the U.S. And, you know, apps have come uh, and they're useful, but SMS is still the most widely used app in the United States. So think about that, even more used than the phone call app on your phone. And mobile is different because it's a 100% opt-in channel. So it's not, you can't uh, kind of buy a list, you have to kind of build that opt-in list. And because of that, the results from mobile campaigns and the properties we see around SMS campaigns, specifically response and action rates, are extremely high. And so some of the properties that lead to this are there's a 99% open rate and view rate for text messages. They're open very quickly, so 83% of texts are open within 15 minutes. And the average open time for a text message is 90 seconds. So when you build your list and you're able to then send them a message, you know that message is going to be seen and you know that message is going to be seen quickly. And a lot of times I'm talking with organizations and, you know, most nonprofits when they start, they're starting with a, a mobile list of zero. But if you look at your file, and especially people that have maybe signed up from your file in the last year or two and given you a phone number, what you'll find is that people are already giving you their mobile number. And so um, about a third, a little more than a third of households in the U.S. are wireless only right now. And so sometimes we'll talk with a potential client and say, well, hey, give us a thousand numbers and we'll look them up and tell you how many people are already giving you their mobile number. And so sometimes it really just takes um, a different viewpoint to say, well, people are already giving us their mobile number. Maybe we should look for it and respond accordingly. So I'm going to go to the next slide in a second, but just to, to kind of lead into it, the way I explain mobile... Uh, SMS um, and adding the benefits of adding the SMS channel, there's kind of two categories of benefits. The first benefit is all about acquisition, and the second benefit is all about action. And every campaign kind of needs both of those, and I'm going to explain what that means by kind of showing, going to the next slide. When we talk about SMS used for acquisition, what that means is from calls to ac action or points of engagement. If you offer someone a response channel of SMS to respond to your point of engagement, the SMS tra channel will drive many more email addresses collected than if, if you only give them a URL as a way to respond or to sign up. So this means print, radio, TV, social media, press, live events, any point of engagement. If you put an SMS call to action next to a URL, and an SMS call to action would be text join to 12345 or go to www.org and sign up. The SMS call to action will generally bring in at least three times as many email addresses as the URL call to action. And this makes intuitive sense. It's easy for the person to take out their phone and text in where there may be a bit of a disconnect if they have to go home and go to the URL and sign up. Um, so again, in terms of acquisition, the SMS channel will drive um, a lot of acquisition and specifically collecting email address. The second piece is driving action. So once someone has opted in, whether they've texted in, filled out a web form, told you in person that you can text them, or kind of enter their phone number into an app, once they opt in, you can now text them. And because there's a 99% open rate, and because the average time it takes to open a message uh, is, is 15, or sorry, 90 seconds, um, the response rates and the action rates from text are extremely good. You can use this channel to drive any action that you want to drive. So whatever kind of is the focus of the campaign, if you're getting people to watch a video, collecting information, getting people to do advocacy calls, or show up to vote, the text message reminder will increase that action. Mobile has a very unique property of kind of getting into the real world very quickly. So it's not only web-based actions like liking something or reposting, it gets into the real world. So we have clients that every day are asking people to bring clothing into a store and donate it, to swab their cheek to see if they're a bone marrow match, um, and taking these real high-value real-world actions and uh, being able to kind of drive that action and then track them.
I just want to talk about a few actions real quick that we do a lot with. Um, one is advocacy calls. So building a list, being able to text out a phone number, and then connect people to a target, whether that's federal or state legislators, or you know, really anybody, governors, the White House. Um, but being able to drive phone call actions is a, is a very kind of valuable and high level action that um, we've done a lot of and uh, can talk about it. And then another one that's very valuable is GOTV. But if we look at a get out the vote timeline, we can see that it's not just a reminder on election day to go vote. It's kind of all throughout the process using the mobile channel to complement your acquisition and then amplify your results, whether that's voter reg, whether that's, you know, promoting early voting and then tracking who's early voting. Um, but just kind of using this as a channel to, again, uh, acquire more people onto your list and then drive more action from those people. And right now I'm going to turn it back over to Dawn, I believe. Yeah, thanks, thanks Michael. Um, really great overview of, of how generally nonprofits are using SMS. And I'm really excited now to turn it over to Dawn to talk about um, how one specific organization with a really amazing digital campaign, actually one of the, for me, one of the most cutting edge digital campaigns around right now as far as advocacy work, um, Greenpeace USA, you know, they decided that they wanted to start I experimenting with SMS. So Donna's going to walk us through, through what considerations they thought about and uh, what some of the campaigns that they actually are running look like. So Don, please take it away. Hi there. Yeah. Um, well, before I begin talking a little bit about Greenpeace's campaign, I'd love to share the results from our earlier poll. Um, it looks like actually most folks on the call, 62% are new to SMS, have not previously tried SMS campaigning. And great. so 38% on the call have or are, are engaged in some way in SMS, which is, which is great to know. So um, jumping right in, um, first off, thanks Michael for that, that awesome overview of, of all the things that, um, that SMS is, is really great at. I'd love to give a more in-depth look at how Greenpeace has um, found uh, specific ways to use SMS in practice. Um, so first off, we are actually pretty new to SMS. Um, it's one of our newest communication channels. We only started using it in 2011, and even then we, we used it very occasionally, not really in an integrated approach with our campaigns. You can see an example of a donate text we sent out in 2011 um, asking people to, uh, to give after um, for our whaling campaign, uh, anti-whaling campaign. Um, but really things started to change this year when we dedicated um, a lot more resources and time to SMS. Um, we really figured out that SMS is just as serious a communication channel as, um, as social media and as email. And when we treated it that way, we got much, more, uh, much stronger results than when we sent kind of in, inter, uh, both um, some irregular uh, text messages, I'll say. Um, so this year, at the beginning of this year, we started looking at what were the specific elements of SMS that were different um, from our other means of communication with supporters, and what holes could, uh, could, those, uh, could SMS fill in our campaigns. Um, and we came up with three big areas where SMS and um, the ways that SMS communication differs from email or social media could really benefit the way that Greenpeace runs its campaigns. Um, first off um, was the way that we engage supporters. Um, right, I think that um, probably if a lot of you haven't already started SMS in your, um, in your organizations, I'm sure that you have the same feeling, or some of you might have the same feeling I did when I started doing SMS work, that SMS is, is a very personal type of communication, um, and it's, it's tricky to think about messaging someone directly and, not, and, um, and having them um, almost certainly see that message right away. Um, but that's actually one of the great benefits of, um, of SMS and one of the things we've really tried to capitalize on. You can make a much more personal connection with a supporter through SMS than really um, than any other channel because it's a direct it's a direct conversation that you're having. So one of our big goals for Greenpeace this year when we um, revamped our SMS program was figuring out a way to engage supporters at a personal level um, with more uh, more customized communications than an email or social media might provide. 
Um, we've also been working to make sure that SMS is a way that, or we use SMS tools effectively. Some of the things that Michael brought up, call campaigns, um, uh, using it to remind people of events. These kind of uh, these kinds of tools are are not necessarily. Um, as readily available in other forms of communication. Um, and lastly, uh, we've been working to improve, uh, to use SMS to uh, support the um, field organizers, the volunteers, the activists on the ground across the country that are working on Greenpeace campaigns and may not um, have access to um, our, our national email list. So, um, Going to our, the, first, the first topic I mentioned, that personal communication. Um, one of the things that, we've, that we at Greenpeace have worked on to make communications more specific and more, um, more useful um, in SMS than, uh, than just repeating what we might say in an email communication, for instance, is by following some pretty strict segmentation. Uh, this works well for Greenpeace because we have a variety of campaigns that um, people are specifically interested in. So someone might be very interested in climate, very interested in oceans. And by um, looking at people's, um, the way that people opt in um, and uh, also what actions they take, we've sent um, people into different groups, organized them into different groups so that we communicate um, more often about issues that that person is interested in. Um, so for instance, a person in our climate group might get um, two out of three messages in the month related to a climate change issue, whereas a person in our forest activist group might receive uh, two messages about forests and then one additional message that's broader. Um, that allows us to not only communicate more often about our campaigns and about the campaigns that, that uh, supporters are interested in, but also we can give them more, uh, more actions to take and more um, higher level actions to take because we know that they're interested in that topic and they, are, they, they want to hear more ways to help than uh, we might provide in an email. So an example of this um, was uh, an example of the segmentation and the way we've built relationships through SMS this year um, comes from our uh, climate activist um, segment um, for our SMS list. This year our video team made an, a great thank you video uh, giving thanks to everyone who took action for the climate in 2013. Um, normally we would post this to social media, but, not also, but, but probably not email out about it. Um, this year we texted that video specifically to people who took climate action. You can actually see the text um, up on, in the upper uh, right hand corner of the slide. Um, and you'll see that we asked people to share it with someone else that they'd like to thank. So not only was it a personal message, but it also had a share ask. And we saw that compared to Facebook, we actually got far more engagement with the video and more people shared it. We were also able to get new activists onto our list because, um, because they shared it via text. So uh, the segmentation allowed us to give a special message to these people and also to, to ask of them um, to take more action, in this case bringing new folks onto our SMS list to be climate activists with Greenpeace. Uh, next up uh, is an example demonstrating some of the ways that we've used SMS specific tools. Um, the picture you see here is, uh, is of a protest that um, Greenpeace student activists um, held outside Starkist headquarters in Pittsburgh uh, against their um, destructive fishing practices. So the day that this protest occurred, we um, were able to send out a, a text message asking people to call in to support those, that, um, that action by calling Starkist headquarters. This is uh, using a call campaign tool. Not only were we able to track who made the call um, and, um, and also how long those calls were, but we were able to give people an action to take directly um, from their phone. And that's something that we found really useful about SMS is especially for things like call campaigns where the action is on your phone. To, to send someone a message on their phone makes it that much more likely that they'll, they'll take action. In this example, 5% um, of the ocean activists we texted to call in did text, whereas only 1% of the people, of the of a, um, oceans activists on our email list made the same call. So it was five times more effective. And um, 
our la my last example from um, how Greenpeace has started integrating, uh, integrating SMS broadly comes from um, our offline work. Uh, right now we are in the middle of, a, of an effort to, um, to break the link between palm oil and deforestation. And um, we wanted to try bringing SMS as a way to uh, bring offline people um, onto, um, onto our list. So we actually had canvassers, Greenpeace has a lot of canvassing offices around the country, um, find and sign up um, interested new, new people um, who wanted to hear more about tigers specifically. Um, we segmented those people and communicated with them um, not only about um, online actions they could take, signing a petition or um, sharing a message, but also other offline actions they could take. So by bringing those people, um, those offline people onto our SMS list, we were able to communicate with them both about um, local events in their area, about other offline events, and um, increase their, uh, bring them into our um, online realm. So um, those are just a few ways that we have um, we've worked to integrate um, SMS this year. But um, I do just want to add that this is, this is very new for us, and there are, a lot of there are a lot more amazing things you can do with SMS. And I know a lot of people on this call, um, a lot of the organizations on this call have, have tried some great things. Thanks, Don. I have to say that um, I'm a subscriber for the, the, the Greenpeace uh, U.S. SMS list, and uh, I was actually at a live event that Greenpeace w um, hosted in San Francisco to support the Arctic 30. Um, that's when I signed up for the SMS list, and um, it's been a great way to, to stay in touch with that campaign and, and to, to have some easy engagement hooks for me to, to, to support your work. So um, personal testimony that, uh, that, it, that it works, SMS engagement. Um, but just one real quick uh, comment about the response rates that, that Don was talking about. I think it's really interesting to think about SMS um, as a way to engage people with the right action at the right time. So um, getting people to take a call on their phone and engaging them through SMS makes it more likely that they're going to, to make a call as opposed to asking them to make a call via email. They may not be as ready to make a call if they're looking at an email um, on their desktop computer, for example. Um, but uh, when we're talking about response rates in general, um, we do see incredible response rates uh, via email from supporters uh, on change.org, sometimes uh, upwards of 30% response rates for, for petitions and, and um, donation asks and the like. So um, it really depends on the, the ask and, and the channel and, and getting that all to, to really come together for the right ask at the right time. So thank you for sharing some of those examples, Don, a little bit of background about how Greenpeace has been using SMS in the U.S. Um, so we've seen what's happened with mobile traffic. Uh, we've seen what's possible with SMS campaigns, and, and we've just seen how Greenpeace USA is, is leveraging SMS. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the first things that you should think about to get started with mobile campaigning. And um, just to, to get a, a better sense of where you all are at, I uh, would love to do a quick poll here um, to see what steps, if any, you've all taken, um, both for mobile and SMS. Have you optimized your mobile templates? Have you started to actually, sorry, I should say started to build your list? Um, have you identified SMS providers? And maybe you've actually started to experiment with SMS. Uh, we're going to be talking about each of these um, uh, topics as a, uh, as a way to get started, but uh, would love to hear from, from the folks online right now what, if anything, they've done to, to prepare to engage supporters uh, online via the, this new channel of SMS. And it looks like so far um, we've gotten a pretty even response across the, uh, across the board. Um, I'm going to skip to the results and show you um, it looks like uh, most folks are, are, are taking the first steps to, to, uh, to try out SMS. And actually, it's a surprising number of folks that are actually getting out there and, and, and doing it. So let's, um, let's jump into some of these items. Hopefully, there's going to be some, uh, some uh, things of interest for even those folks that are already uh, have active SMS campaigns. The first thing really to think about when you are, are wanting to, to optimize um, and, and to engage people um, where they're at on their mobile devices is really optimized for that mobile user experience. And 
real simple breakdown for things to start thinking about now uh, is your email templates and um, your, your landing pages. Um, thinking about how you can make these the best user experience possible when someone are, is looking at them on mobile devices. Um, I would say if you haven't already, it's really worthwhile looking at your, your web traffic and, and your, your email stats, your open rates and, and um, the open percentages for different devices if your email provider provides that information. It's going to be really helpful for you and actually might even be a, a little bit of an alarm to realize that so many people are opening your, your emails and looking at your web content on mobile devices. Um, next step, I would actually encourage you to really look at your emails on a mobile device if you haven't already and, and click through and look at a landing page on a mobile device. If you don't have um, a smartphone, um, find someone else that has one and, and just make sure you know what your supporters are looking at. That's going to actually give you the, some of the information that you need. It might scare you a little bit, but it's going to um, give you the information you need to, to take those first steps to provide a better mobile experience. Um, and a quick example from what Change.org has done over the last year, this is um, an email template that um, is one of our Action Alert email templates. This is from early 2013, maybe February or so of last year. And you can see it's, um, uh, it's an email template that has a, a, a call to action of signing a petition. This has been very heavily optimized in, in many of the different variables that you consider when you're talking about optimizing for conversion on email. Uh, but what it wasn't optimized for was, was mobile viewing. So our product team and our campaigns team took a lot of time to create a new optimized mobile email template using something called responsive design. And responsive design is uh, a design technique that adapts the content presentation to the display area of the device that someone is looking on. So it can tell what device someone is using and present the content so that it looks the best it can within that display area. And you can see that this email template is stacked. There's a big image, a title, and then a, a big action button. So it just flows a lot better. It's, it's uh, kind of the horizontal uh, scrolling uh, design that we're seeing more and more of, of the web. And when we implemented these op mobile optimized templates, this, these are email templates, again, we saw uh, over an 11% increase on signatures, not just opens, but actual um, signatures on a petition that someone signed when they click through from this email to our website. So huge potential um, before you even get to, to, to SMS actions for optimizing your, your mobile templates. And um, the connection really is that if someone is responding to an SMS campaign, they're going to be opening a landing page on your mobile device. So it all has to work together. Um, you know, as Michael mentioned, SMS is a, an amplifier and, and, and a way to uh, complement email and web and all the other channels you're using. So uh, optimizing those, those email and uh, web landing pages are really important. Um, and uh, Don's going to talk to us next about uh, building uh, your list for uh, getting started with SMS. Um, yeah. So for when you're thinking about starting um, to build a list, one of the great one of the great things about um, SMS is that we you can actually use a lot of the existing um, resources that your organization has. That's certainly what Greenpeace has done in large part. Um, and this might answer, I think, a couple questions in the chat. Um, so one of, the, one of the things that Greenpeace has done that's worked really well for us um, to build our list is actually to just explicitly ask supporters who especially are opting into the email list to also join the mobile list. For us, that looks like asking them um, when they take a, a survey at the beginning of their um, – once they opt into email, um, once they take a survey from email, they can opt in through mobile that way. Um, and we've seen some great success and in regular um, increase in our audience. Um, but there's a lot of other ways that are, are really great to attract specific types of people to your SMS list. Um, for instance, if you, use, uh, if you make sure to include a short code um, like, like we used at the beginning of this webinar, the um, SMS to 877, 877 um, if you use that kind of system at an offline event, you can get people to um, opt in who normally would just walk by um, a, a protest or a, a, an event of some kind that you were hosting. So um, if there is a – any time that you have an offline event, you can easily incorporate the SMS shortcode to get new names. 
Um, and also you'll know that the names coming from that event are, are strong ones of people who are offline, um, are interested in your offline activities. Um, also, you can use your social media resources. You can ask people on your Facebook or Twitter accounts to opt in. Um, we've seen less strong results with that than with asking our email list, but it's certainly worth trying. Um, and also just asking your SMS list itself, um, including telefriend options on, uh, all, on SMS communications allows people to share interesting content with their friends. Much like um, the example I, I showed earlier with the Climate Thanks video, we got new subscribers because uh, people wanted to share that content with their friends. Um, and finally, really easy ways to increase the amount of mobile names on, uh, for your SMS list is just to include a mobile field and an, a, an ability to opt in for uh, petitions and donate forms. For Greenpeace, um, we're concerned a little bit about whether or not that affects conversion rates, and we're still figuring that out. So uh, what we've done instead, at least for the time being, is we're including that information, um, texting uh, to opt in, on the thank you pages for our donation forms, for instance. So people still get a chance to opt in, um, but it might not be on that front page. Um, and one of the great things about building your list um, from scratch, if some, since so many of you are new, is you can to, to the SMS world is that you can really decide what kind of use you want your SMS list to have. So Greenpeace has in large part used it to grow, um, it's to gather its strongest activists in many ways, people that are willing to call um, at the drop of a hat. Um, but you can also use it to gather a, a lot of new names, as Michael said, for acquisition. So um, using the, the existing tool you have, you can really uh, you can create an effective list that fits what you need as an organization. Great, and I'm going to talk, this is Michael again, I'm going to talk just a little about some of the things you want to think about when choosing a provider. I'm going to do, do it quickly and be very not salesy. Um, so, so we kind of focus on text message, phone calls, mobile web. Those are the really established channels. That's where a you know, 99% of the volume is happening. And uh, it makes sense that, you know, uh, text messaging to drive phone calls, to uh, drive mobile web clicks, and that should all work together. The emerging channels that are available are mobile transactions. And so that's, you know, a few years ago it was really all about text in to give $10 or text in to give $5 for, um, for the cause and kind of a mobile donation. And that's still going on. There are some new things that uh, would take a little longer to talk through, but they're really exciting in terms of uh, you know, driving donations and uh, kind of unlimiting it from that you know, 5 or $10 donation. And then um, MMS is also sort of newly available for organizations. We've been able to do it for years, you know, person to person, send a picture, um, but the carriers have just within the last few years opened it up for organizations to be able to send or receive uh, pictures and videos. And so I definitely look at, you know, when, when talking about a vendor, uh, looking at automation. So, so make sure, you know, it's, it's somewhat automated, you know, because these lists will grow to the millions, hundreds of thousands, and, and definitely tens of thousands of people. Um, so you want, you know, good automation, um, and you want it to be kind of clear on how you could set things up. I would, you know, recommend self-service. That's the route we went uh, so that you can go and add keywords, uh, you know, at midnight if you need to, um, and you don't kind of have to call somebody to add a keyword. Um, but there are options available for both. Um, um, but having a good self-service tool um, that's easy to use is, um, is a plus. And then in kind of the front end, when you think about how you're going to be communicating with supporters and the different segmentations and the different actions you're going to want to drive, this is a really good time to think about features and to talk through like the features of the platform. And that's kind of what, what we would generally call the front end as opposed to the back end. And the way we've chosen to do it is Mobile Commons back end is a CRM system. And uh, so something that, that has been really key for us and our customers is being able to integrate mobile um, into the main CRM. And so what that means, and, and Dawn can probably attest to this, is it's kind of two things. One, when people are filling out the forms on the web, uh, it's really easy to make that cell phone optionable, optional 
and say, if you fill out your cell phone here, we're going to text you. And so that automatically can come into Mobile Commons and the person receives a welcome message. Just as importantly, going the other way, if you do a rally or from social media or from you know, a sponsored event or something like that, if you have people take out their phone and text in, you can then ask for their email address and um, collect that and get that directly into your CRM so that you can use that for email. So it's always good to have things talk to each other in a simple way and not have multiple lists to manage um, even though you are adding another channel. And I think now we're turning it back over to Lawrence or Don. Yeah, I think this is me. Um, so um, just as a, as a final note, I'm thinking about um, if you're thinking about starting up with SMS, and I know that a lot of you are since over 60% of you on the call haven't tried SMS yet, um, don't be afraid to try and just jump in. Um, I think that one of the things I was most nervous about starting, um, starting working more on, on the Greenpeace SMS list was just how personal um, and, and new this form of communication is. But there are so many great advantages to that kind, of, um, that kind of communication that if you pick one campaign, one place to start, and, and just simply start testing what works, for, um, what works for your list, what doesn't work, um, and map out what are the things that you want to be, uh, that are holes for, for your communications with your organization, whether it's you want a way to rapidly respond to supporters, or you want a way to um, help people take action more quickly. Whatever it is, um, pick that one thing and start from there. And the last thing that I'd suggest um, when starting a new program especially is just to start opting into everything. Opt into um, all the lists that you can find and start to really learn how all the amazing things that, um, that nonprofits are doing in the SMS space. There are so many organizations that are even on this call that really inspired what Greenpeace started doing this year. And um, I'm sure that, that you'll find the same thing uh, as well. And that's yeah, right. and um, thank you to all those uh, organizations that are on with us. And um, just want to put out another call for questions. Uh, if you have any questions for, for Don and how Greenpeace USA has been using SMS for their work, if you have any questions for, for Michael about Mobile Commons and their platform or, or SMS uh, text messaging platforms in general, please uh, uh, enter them in the chat window right now. Uh, we're going to wrap up with uh, some campaign examples, uh, both from Mobile Commons and from Greenpeace, and then we'll get to those questions. So uh, turning it back over to Michael. Great. So, so Don just mentioned test, test, test. Um, we will be, and I'll definitely let Lawrence know about this, but uh, we've been working with clients to do a lot of year-end fundraising testing and basically looking at, you know, do mobile subscribers, are they more likely to donate at year-end? Do they donate more? Do they donate, you know, more often throughout the year? So hopefully we'll have those results very soon and be able to share those. Um, I just wanted to talk through a few kind of interesting example campaigns. So with um, Reform Immigration for America is that the main client here, uh, because of the population they were talking to, which was a heavily Latino population, um, SMS became their primary channel. The results, you know, the, the action rates they saw from email, uh, in this case, because of the Latinos were just dwarfed by what they saw via SMS, and so they switched to kind of SMS as their primary channel. And so being able to kind of do all these campaign examples, organizing house parties, bringing people to rallies, using email and SMS to you know, really drive that home, um, they were just able to kind of integrate the, the mobile uh, conversations into everything they needed to do. And we saw some really impressive numbers uh, from their campaign and, uh, and uh, picking back up again now that it's, it's, it's back on the slate. Another kind of st good story to tell is, uh, you know, taking all this data we're collecting through SMS conversations and getting it to the web in, in a map format. And so kind of the, one of the interesting examples here is on the left, WNYC. So we had a major snowstorm, and this was a few years ago, believe it or not, um, even though we've been having them all this year as well. But we had a major snowstorm in New York a few years back, and the mayor said, you know, hey, great, all the streets have been plowed. WNYC, who's a customer, they went on the air and said, hold on, wait a second, tell us what it really looks like out there. Text the word plow to 12345 and kind of tell us what it looks like on your block. And so people texted in. Instead of the message coming back 
saying, give us your name and email. It said, hey, tell us your address. They text in their address. We collect that. Then the message says, great, is your street plowed? Reply yes or no. They reply yes or no. We collect that as data. Last but not least, they got a message that said, call in and leave a voicemail and tell us what it looks like out there. Remember, this is radio, so that audio is really important to them. So they were able to use these text message conversations as if the person was basically filling out a web form, collect the information, and then they mapped it. And so we could see uh, in the city what streets were plowed and what weren't, and people could drill into the map and listen to the voicemails. They even used a few of them on the air. And then they actually went back to the list and said, hey, is your street you know, plowed yet, reply yes or no, and so you could see the city changing over time. So again, a way to go from media to acquire new people, engage with them back and forth, drive them to the web um, to take actions, and just kind of keep it going. So Don? Yeah, um, so I have one um, kind of longer example from, from Greenpeace of a, way, of a time that um, SMS from start to finish was a really useful and integrated form of communication for us. I think probably um, the culmination of, of a lot of the work that we've done this year to, to start uh, to improve our SMS communications. So um, uh, this, this September, um, there was a major, a, a very organization changing event really um, for Greenpeace when um, a crew of, of 30 and, and or 30 crew and activists uh, who were protesting in Russia, nonviolent uh, non um, action in Russia um, against oil drilling um, in the Arctic uh, there, um, were actually uh, arrested by the Russian Coast Guard and charged with both piracy and hooliganism, um, which are 15-year uh, charges. So this took the organization by surprise, um, and we had to respond really quickly to, uh, to the situation. And we found that SMS was a really great tool throughout this campaign um, from start to finish. So within hours of this event taking place, we were able to notify, uh, as soon as we knew what was going on, we were able to notify our supporters, our SMS subscribers, exactly what was happening and give them um, a way to take action immediately. Um, after that, the next day we were able to launch a call campaign to those same subscribers and also um, uh, to canvassers on the street, we were able to set up a call campaign for them so that people could start telling the Russian embassy that the Arctic 30 needed to be released. Um, as a point of comparison, um, Greenpeace International, who's, uh, who leads a lot of uh, leads our international efforts on campaigning, um, actually uh, also launched a, a call campaign, but because many offices don't have SMS, theirs took several weeks to set up. Um, and by that time, we'd already generated several hundred calls to, uh, to embassies. Um, then there was an offline component as well. Because, um, there, were, because there was a lot of, of um, offline support for uh, for the Arctic 30 activists across the country, it was a perfect opportunity to use SMS to bring those people um, into communication with Greenpeace. You can see in the top left-hand corner, a, in, a, in very small text, the words, text Arctic 30 to 877-877. That sign traveled the country this, this fall um, at demonstrations, um, at, at vigils, uh, down the West Coast especially, and people were able to take action right there on the street who learned about the problem instead of having to sign a paper petition or um, having to uh, maybe go to a URL and, and log on um, to sign a petition. Um, and also, once those people did opt into text messaging, we were able to communicate with them about the issue throughout the, the rest of um, the time the activists were in Russia. Uh, and ask higher, higher asks, higher level asks of them, for instance, calling in. So it was a really useful tool offline. And the last, um, the last uh, example of that, of that offline support that SMS really provided was from this, this image at the bottom you see is PowerShift from this year, PowerShift which is a massive um, a youth conference on, on climate and, and energy um, and a lot of other things. Uh, we had five minutes to present about the Arctic 30 at PowerShift in front of a, cl of a crowd of several thousand um, student activists. And um, all that the speaker had to do was say um, at the end of his speech, text 
Arctic 30 to 877-877, and somewhere between 10 and 15 percent of that crowd immediately texted in. And not only did they take action, but we were able to keep them in the loop as well about what was happening for the activists that were detained. Um, and lastly, um, the SMS people that had, that had joined us along the way uh, throughout the campaign, whether it was a call camp, whether they joined the call campaign or were already on our list or um, saw um, a vigil on the street, um, all of them were the first people to know that the Arctic 30 were released um, in, uh, uh, in the end of December because we were able to turn around a message to them right away. So um, because SMS was both rapid response and able to be used offline and online, um, it really supported the entire Arctic 30 work. And uh, I think I'm turning it. I think I'm turning it back over to Lawrence. Yes, thank you so much, Don, and for Michael uh, for those great examples. Um, really uh, illustrative of of what can happen with SMS. And um, we have gotten some incredible questions, uh, clearly a topic of interest for folks on this call. Um, I'm going to turn our attention to those in just a minute. Um, I did want to mention uh, that we regularly host webinars here at change.org. Our next webinar is uh, later this month, um, actually in February. We're not in February just yet. We're almost there. Um, but uh, we'll be hosting uh, one of our regular webinars about people powering your campaigns with online petitions. Um, so if you want to learn more about that webinar or any of the content we have available, you can visit us at change.org slash organizations. Uh, we're on the social web, uh, Twitter at changeorgs, and facebook.com slash changeorgs. My email is lawrence at Grodeska. Uh, if you have any questions, would like to follow up, if you'd like to learn more about our sponsor campaigns to find the supporters you need for your work, please feel free to email me. If you'd like to get in touch with, with Michael or, or Don, I'd be happy to connect you through them. Um, just feel, feel free to email me at lawrence at change.org. So turning our attention now to questions, actually first let me just say thank you to everyone that joined the call today. Um, thank you uh, to Don and Michael for sharing their time and knowledge and, and expertise. And thank you to all of you for, for listening in and, and, uh, and learning about this exciting new channel. Uh, if you have to go, uh, feel free to do so. We're going to be answering some questions right now, but really appreciate your time on the call today. So thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so the first question is uh, kind of a, a sort of best practices question for um, when and, and how often you should engage supporters through text messages. Um, so Don, I, I wondered if you could speak a little bit uh, as far as what you've learned at Greenpeace as far as um, how often you ask uh, people uh, on your SMS list to, to interact with a, a a petition or, or a call-in campaign, anything that you've, you've gleaned as far as how often to engage that, that channel? Yeah, um, I think that, well, the way that the Greenpeace, um, for most of its uh, segments, communicates is about, is somewhere between two and four times a month. Um, we try not to message more than um, once a week unless it's something urgent, and also to make sure that the content is varied, so it's not just a petition, a petition, a petition, but maybe, uh, or a donate ask and a petition, um, but also including uh, some kind of engagement or, or content that we think would be interesting. Um, I think one thing that's, that has been, that's been harmful in the past for our list has been waiting a long time in between text messages over, over a month or so because then people start to disengage with, the, um, with SMS. So certainly more frequently than that. But that's about how often um, we found really uh, gets the most engagement. Excellent. Um, question for, for, for you, Don, and for Michael. Uh, some interesting, uh, some, some Questions about how to roll out SMS, either to your existing email list. Um, someone asks that they have uh, phone information for nearly all of the supporters on their email list, but they haven't explicitly opted in to text messages. So are there best practices or, or potentially um, privacy concerns around automatically adding people to an SMS campaign if they haven't explicitly opted in? Michael, why don't you start? Yeah, so people do have to explicitly opt in. 
Um, absolutely. So, and it, they won't get mad at Mobile Commons if they receive a text. You know, they'll get mad at, at you if, if you text them and they haven't agreed to it. So, um, you know, you do want them to explicitly opt in, and it's very easy to do that and build the list, especially from your existing list. So, um, I, I think I chatted this person back directly, but you know, you when you email them, you can include in the header and possibly footer of the email, uh, hey, text to join our mobile list. Uh, we've had clients make it a point of the list that says, hey, we want you to join the mobile list because they've tested their data and they know that if someone is on the mobile list, they're going to be, you know, three or five times more likely to call Congress for them or make a donation. So they want to build that mobile list. So including it in the mobile list, uh, sorry, including promotions in the email, uh, adding the checkbox to your form that says, yes, you can text me uh, so that you can build the list while you're sleeping. And then also, you know, including it in real world engagements, promotions moving forward uh, as you get new people is what I'd recommend. Excellent. Anything to add on that question, Dawn, or? No, no, I have nothing to add there. That was great. Okay, cool. Um, interesting uh, set of questions around which demographics respond to, to SMS, and if there's any particular um, age group or, or maybe even um, uh, ethnic group that, uh, and even actually some questions about international texting, whether that SMS is a, um, a good channel for that. Um, Michael or, or Don, uh, Michael, generally from what you've seen of the nonprofits using your platform, any um, uh, specifics about uh, who is responding? And, and for example, older uh, supporters, is, is SMS not the right channel to, to reach them? Yeah, so up until the age of, of about 55 or 60, somewhere in between there, you send more text messages than you make phone calls. Um, above 60, it's, it's, uh, it's the other way. You make more phone calls than you do text messages. And if you're trying to talk to people 40 and under and you're not using text, uh, you're kind of missing a huge opportunity. So, and then, you know, obviously when we get to like 17-year-olds um, and 22-year-olds, and it's like that is their only channel. There is a stat out there that 6% of 18-year-olds check their email every day and 40% of 18-year-olds um, don't use email that regularly. So, you know, it's the skewing younger, I'd go heavier on text. Skewing older, I'd go heavier on email. Um, but, you know, it is another channel that's ubiquitous. And so um, uh, the demographics that are heavy text message users are um, younger, Latinos, African Americans, um, but it is kind of everywhere where people are communicating. And I think the reason for older people not you know, using as much text yet is it's really they're not the heavy communicators. So they don't use any channel as much. Um, gotcha. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense to me. Um, Don, have you seen anything? Um, I'm curious if, if Greenpeace, uh, other branches of Greenpeace have, have done any work with, with uh, SMS internationally and if any kind of anecdotal r reports on, on how that's worked. I, sure. Um, there are several other offices for Green, um, Greenpeace offices, specifically India and in, in um, Nordic countries, and I, I believe also the UK, that have used SMS um, and have, have used it in, in completely different ways, honestly, than, than our office uses it and have found amazing success. Um, the GP Nordic office has, or, or pro, I think UK has, um, has used it to um, draw people from uh, published ads and, um, and other publications to their campaign. So um, getting people to opt in that way. And, our, um, and the GP India office actually has hundreds of thousands of people um, that, that don't have Internet access but um, have a mobile phone. And so their entire um, communication structure is different because they are able to communicate, they are able to communicate over um, over text where there is no, they might, those people wouldn't be able to be on the email list. Um, so there's definitely some great, there's some great things happening with SMS um, in other countries. And I, I believe that at least in some countries, SMS is a lot more prevalent um, a form of communication even than in the U.S. So internationally, SMS can be quite strong. Yeah, yeah that's great. what we've seen on our front too. Um, anything to add to that, Michael? I guess you guys are, are mostly U.S. focused, though, right? We're mostly U.S. You know, we've done a few things internationally. Uh, it's kind of just as big there. Uh, I would say, yeah, like you know, on the services side, in in some um, 
uh, it, SMS is great for like the services side of things. So whether it's in the U.S. or internationally, you know, getting people to flu shots, reminding them about appointments, kind of that public health services for underserved populations. It's a really, it's a really uh, big, big thing that um, that's going on as well. Yeah, gotcha. One more quick question to wrap up here: um, the the question of cost or, or resources. And um, Don, I want to explicitly ask you as far as what. Greenpeace USA has planned for not only staffing, but uh, you know other resources necessary to get this program, this SMS program, off the ground in the last year or two. Sure. Uh, so. In terms of staffing, it's really just at this point, um, SMS is, is really um, just part of, um, of my responsibilities um, at the organization. So um, it can be a fairly small operation if you, if you don't have a lot of capacity. Um, it doesn't necessarily take a, a full-time person to, to, um, to run a, a good SMS program. At least that's not, we um, haven't, we... Down. Uh, is it half SMS, half other digital channels, or...? Um, I'd say it's a little, it's a little bit um, even less than that. It might be more like 30%. Um, of course, uh, as you grow, it, as we grow, I think that might change. But, um, but yeah, it, it doesn't require um, necessarily it, uh, a full, a full-time person running just SMS. Uh, and in terms of, in terms of resources and cost, I think, um, I mean, we're we're clients of of Mobile Commons, but there are a lot of different. Um, and I think even some more limited but, uh, but free SMS uh, providers out there that don't have quite the same feature sets but um, are at different cost levels as well. Um, so I think that it's something that is available pretty broadly um, for even a more restricted time and, and resource um, group. Great. Well, we're over the, uh, the hour mark, so um, I'm just going to, to cut it there. Uh, thank Don and Michael once again for, for their time and incredible insight. And thank all of you for joining us today. Hope this was uh, insightful um, as far as how your organization can get started or keep going with SMS. And have a great day. Have a great night depending on where you're calling in from. And hope to see you online again soon. Take care. <laughs>